Josh, Zuby Zubricus. These pretzels are making Zuby thirsty. Gavin from Terror Tech Industries. Hey, this is Matt Grant, and uh, you should be watching Y5 over. I'm Dustin, King of the Airways. Hello, la, la, la. Hello and welcome to episode la, 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 9 la, 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 of our la. podcast here at beautiful Wellington Street Studios. If you are uh, catching this, you are listening to us in Rewind on iTunes or Podomatic if you're from a Android device. And it can be clear if you're up watching us. application of penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> you're watching us live on Monday night at 8 at BehindTheBunker.com. So check us out, guys. We are a weekly paintball show that's only been running for almost three years. We're going to be celebrating our 150th show in, uh, well, three weeks. How's that? Yay! Um, with me in the studio tonight, I have uh, several talented people, and aside from them, I have uh, Josh. Yeah. How are What's you? What's up, buddy? Hi. How's it going? <laughs> he walked right into that. And Joe Kimson from Flaggers Paintball. I you just Good evening. Welcome to the <laughs> podcast, the after show. <laughs> We had several fumbles on our previous show, so uh, we're, we're hopefully going to nail this one. Matt the Crypt, thank you for being here again. You're welcome. And Dusty, our question guy. Yeah, and Seb, who is MIA. Yeah. Here, no, comes, here comes. down the stairs. He almost fell down. There he is. Oh, there he goes. He just sort of came in. Seb, thank you for joining us. Hi, everybody. How do you like the Hi, new- Dr. Dr. Seb. How do you like the new e-cigarettes? Do they fire up quicker and give you a quicker thing, or...? I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> How long the batteries last in those things? Quite a while, I hear. <sighs> Are you still a Marlboro man? Camel. Complete with the camel, yeah. I like the <laughs> Unfiltered. You're a camel. You smoke the filter first, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you do, don't you? You're still a camel guy? That explains your search queries. Oh. All right, so moving on, moving guys. On, moving on. We have lots to get to on uh, tonight. We have lots of your questions. That was out of bounds. <laughs> that was out of bounds. <laughs> That's what his browser told him, too, wasn't it? Uh, all right, so we have lots of China, questions you know? to get to. If you guys want to ask the panel any questions, we're watching the live chat. We're also watching our Twitter feed, at Behind the Bunker. Uh, set it up now, and we can certainly get on there. It's nice to see all you guys in the uh, chat forum tonight. Uh, Petwara Beast, Midget Angler, uh, Eric Angler... Martello31, Off the Break, nice to see you back, WS Psycho, uh, No Mercy, CX4, prefers DXS, Shadow Wolf, Seb777, No Clue, Valken Ryan, nice to see you, Newfie Paintball, uh, Brother Grim, The Skeletor, Chappelle, Midget, Yellowstain, uh, you know what, I can't go on, there's lots of people in there. So guys, thank you for joining us. Um... We have questions, Dustin. What do you have? Uh, should we start with those I right have away? a ton of questions here tonight. Well, let's start with one. Oh, sure. That's a lot of questions. Brandon Decker wonders, what type of themes for scenarios are preferred by the masses? Historical events, science fiction events, music, TV, video games. Which events do you find the most popular or which ones do you enjoy playing the best? Joe likes sci-fi ones. <sighs> <laughs> I like historic, real ones that I can m- wrap my head around. Is that it? Nobody else? <laughs> no. Nobody else? I, you know what? I'm going to answer that. I, 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 I have to say that I enjoy... Joe's got a good point. Um, I'm not as up on my military history as he is. Um, what I like to see is... Uh, you know, motion pictures. If there's a, a great picture that's uh, out at the theaters and you go and watch it and you think it's an awesome movie, you know, um, and then you're able to play at a big game that uh, incorporates all of the characters and themes and, and storyline from that, um, I like that. I like to be able to watch something on TV the night before. You know, if I'm going to go to uh, Red Dawn per se, I will go and well, sadly please. watch the movie, which afterwards I wish to have my hour and a half back. Um, but uh, <laughs> I agree. Uh, I, 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 I will Red go ahead Dawn. and watch that. So for Red me, Dawn for is me, true. Like it's based on a real life story. <laughs> but to be honest, it really doesn't. You know, Zuby made this point a couple weeks ago. It doesn't really matter what the theme of it is, as long as it's well written. Um, yes, that's the key. It's always good, and make sure that the generals are handsome. You got it. <laughs> like with that, with a sexy beard. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So soft and cuddly. Why is the camera <laughs> on me right now? <laughs> <laughs> I push button. <laughs> You're pushing mine. All right, so How come button wasn't plural because it's the podcast, money? and the camera doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, 
people can see us now We're though that are lighting. on the chat form. No. Yeah, well, yeah, the people watching can see us. Yeah. Just the people, but they that just can't them. watch us later. <laughs> yeah, I the podcast because they're listening can. to us. Yeah, that's why it's a podcast. All right, like so on an iPod. Maybe they could download pods. the video. Is there a video of this? Can nope. they download that? No, no, it's not a vodcast. Uh, we've been leaving it up for people to actually check out uh, on the YouTube. V-log? So if you want to check yeah, it out, V-log. you can. So yeah. th- I can see my hair. Yeah. All right, let's move on. <laughs> questions, questions. <laughs> what Your hair's getting kind of long. Right. It is. I meant to cut it today, but I ran out of time. <laughs> Zoeks. All right. Sure. What is one rookie mistake you try to correct new players at big games when you go? Big games, tournament games, whatever. I don't know if it's a mistake, but I, 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 it frustrates me when they don't move. They're stuck in one spot, and you go out and have lunch, and you come back, and they're in the exact same crate yelling the same thing that someone's peppering them. Do you ever start shooting at them? Then you assault them. <laughs> <laughs> or shooting around them? To be honest with you, I've, I've shot beside them to get their attention for them to look behind me and then yell, hey, you know, maybe you should move forward or, or, or move up. And that usually sort of helps sometimes. Have so, they ever shot back? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. It's not so much tactics you have to be worried about with new players. It's more so the safety aspect. They they typically like to take their mask off sporadically and you know walk yeah. around without a barrel sleeve on. That's true. They get shot and their game's still going on, but they take their mask off because they're out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I guess the other thing is newbies are bad for getting hopper hits and not realizing it. I mean, an experienced player will know or hear, know the sound when he gets hit in the hopper. Um, but a newbie will just continue to, you know, blind fire around the corner. His gun will be dripping in paint, but he's not realizing that he's actually hit and he's out. That's not necessarily a newbie <laughs> a newbie trait as well. But yes, there's just thinking that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a bad habit. All right. So, what is the best slash funniest result you've ever seen of bonus balling? Hmm. Hmm. I I've seen guys deservedly get over bonus ball that I've seen guys that have not um, on the rec ball field I think it's uh, it's completely inappropriate I don't think there's any reason to overshoot anybody on the rental field or the, the scenario field in speed ball I can understand people trying to get back on people for doing things um, or especially when, when, you know, when another team has uh, very few people in their pits uh, and on their team and uh, you, you stitch them up pretty good it's hard to get them clean in those two minutes between points um, I can understand that rationale, but should never overshoot anybody on a on a, on a rental field. Sure, I agree. <laughs> I, agree I agree wholeheartedly. I don't think there's yeah, any need. That didn't to answer shoot the up. question. That just got me ranting. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> Thanks, Zuby. <laughs> You're welcome, Todd. All right, the next question is for Zuby directly. If Dustin gets <coughs> to ask the Dustin, question, can we have the question? Or he keeps looking at listening. naked ladies on said we're computer. We're trying yeah. to kick somebody out of the chat room right now because they won't. Tell Dern. If you kick me out of the chat room one more no, time, I'm yellow coming stain. over I've, this I've table I've asked him you. many times to, to tell us about his name, but he won't do it. Uh, now he's asking, stage? where are you going? So now he's acknowledging me. <laughs> How about, okay. <laughs> All right, so. I'm calling you out, yellow stain. Sebastian Duran wonders, is, what is it about first strike rounds? That people find so controversial. How did you know this question would be for me? I didn't, but you know what? <laughs> Ding. <laughs> that, that, was perfect. that was perfect. <laughs> First strike rounds of controversy. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's take a, um, a paintball, which is actually designed to break and sputter at a certain speed and distance and velocity and pressure. Let's uh, completely change that and say that it's um, <clears throat> uh, still okay. It is not still okay. They are not tested. No, no. Nor have we ever seen the actual test results from their testing. They hurt. They hurt like yeah. Ash prefers in the chat room right now. He's shot you. with butter. Yeah. You know what? I have to say that the, the, the reason for me to not like first strike rounds is the fact that I can crony with whatever paint I'm using, and then I'm allowed to use first strike rounds, and I don't have to. You know, there's a big difference with the crony, and even if I do crony hot with the first strike, and that's my. You know my higher velocity, and that's that. That's what I'm allowed at 280 per se. It's still a different velocity from what I'm shooting at. I I, I think you're just giving people an opportunity to shoot over over crony. So for yep. me, that sort of bothers me. Plus, Close they're enough. hard as hell. <laughs> I don't like to get shot with them. That's for sure. How'd you like that question? That was good. Awesome. How will we make the next awesome one? Question. Uh, Zuby, Zu, Zuby's question. Dustin, why? <laughs> I'm trying to watch the chat. I can't follow it. Well, hey, not a big word. <laughs> <laughs> when someone types, the chat moves up one notch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
How he's trying to figure out, follow it with his finger. It keeps moving. <laughs> <laughs> no, not again. Oh, wait. There's one that someone just posted up that's in crayon. Do you want to have that one? Yeah, or? that one's easier to read. It's a lot bigger. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. How can we improve player to non-player involvement? Oh. What? Sorry, Mark. I missed that. How can we improve player to non-player involvement? I guess that... Maybe that's trying to uh, get renters in more involved or some new it, players more involved in a game. The right. question's arbitrary. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it has to do with uh, like trying to improve the image of paintball so that players, people that do not move play, on. move on. You know, see a better on. image. In <laughs> move on. Move on. What's the knuckle breathers in the <laughs> state? Tell that knuckle. Be- yeah, tell the knuckle breather <laughs> to resend his question in good earnest. More and specific. then we'll move on to the next yeah. question. I would like to know how many viewers out there will adopt, either willingly or without being aware, of calling um, certain types of players knuckle, knuckle, breathers. Bre- knuckle breathers. Because we last week we called them, uh, or two weeks ago we called them uh, mouth-breathing knuckle draggers, and then it got turned into knuckle, got short knuckle breathers. We need to make Gavin a t-shirt. That's <laughs> <laughs> I heart <laughs> knuckle breathers? <laughs> I heart knuckle breathers. <laughs> Should be like the next t-shirt, the new BTB t-shirt not design. bad i think i might have to print some up look at a jersey with knuckle breather out of <laughs> speaking of which if you want behind the bunker swag head on over to behind the bunker.com scroll down and you'll see our swag shop is open shameless open yeah. swag shop. it was my uh, opportunity for dustin to uh, to read something over there is that also because you highlighted on the bottom here of today's uh show notes there it is so. talk about sponsors <laughs> <Sell t-shirts. laughs> <laughs> Senseless plug. Insert here. All right. Uh, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> All right. Question here There's from Ethan. There's more awkward well. silence in here than a first date. <laughs> All right. Ethan Well writes, do you know of any professional players that have been hard of hearing and what techniques have been in- used to combat that disability? Oh, Jesus Christ. I've played with people that I swear were hard <laughs> for hearing. <laughs> um, yeah, what? that's that's a tough one. What would you say? Huh? Oh. <laughs> All right, let's let's break it down. If you're if you're Turn playing with your uh, if you're playing with guys on a scenario field and radios are allowed, I would definitely offer or, or um, offer the suggestion to get some headphones and crank the hell out of that radio if they are hard of hearing. I don't know if that helps. Um, if they're on the speedball field, they shouldn't. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> If, if if you're hard of hearing, you probably want to play a back position because you're the one that's usually reciting the positions of where people are supposed to be. Um, I certainly wouldn't be an upfront player if you're having to listen to people. Um, I don't know what what else could you do? If a guy's hard of hearing and he's playing on the rental field, you could use perhaps use hand signals. We actually, I, th- I believe, we had someone playing that was was deaf and and they they were signing. Signing to him or her to move. Microphone. I think I recall. Yeah. I recall it. This uh, when the game stopped, someone had to be a little. You more were doing some hand vi- gestures. Visual. Earlier. I was doing some Eric Engler's military hand signals. But I believe when the game stopped, the referee went over and indicated that the game had started. As you know, most any any deaf deaf people often can read lips. So, but it's tough to read lips when everyone's wearing a mask. So I believe the referee um, was involved more. Yeah, no, and 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 the other option is lights. Like if you could have, a, if the ref could have a strobe light, then he could use that to catch the attention. You put it on his top of his head. <laughs> so you find no, but I'm serious. Like at the same time, it, I, I'm thinking of, <laughs> of people that have hard of hearing on their telephones at home. They have um, strobe lights so that when the phone rings, it strobes so that you can at least know that. Or you could send him a text. Well, yeah, yes. <laughs> <Bzzz>. <laughs> Let's, yes, yeah. let's let's make fun of these people. <laughs> I wasn't making fun of them. God just... dang it, Bobby! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I keep meaning to ask you your Starbucks cup. What size is that? That's not a Vente Grande. It is a Vente. Is it seriously? It just looks like a mammoth. Twenty. It's a biggie. <laughs> That's a size of your head. I'll tell you what. <laughs> your head dwarfs compared to that. I had a free drink, so I got a, a thing. <sighs> Joe will be on the ceiling soon. All right, let's continue this abomination. Do you have any more questions? <laughs> sure. I have an email here from Louis Christo. Uh, he's, he wrote in an email to us 
Uh, hey team, I hope you are all are, you all are okay and keeping well. Please, can you we answer are, this on you. your podcast? Please, if you want. The reason why I ask this is to be answered in the podcast is because I've set it up on my phone to download it automatically and listen to it on the go. I like watching your show, but I don't always have the time. My question is, I kind of want answered is, I'm going to Canada, Oshawa, Ontario. I would like to play while I'm Stop pointing at me. No, I'm pointing at Matt. I, I ripped the pen off of pen. you, and then I realized it was him doing it. No, yeah, I'm sorry. No sorry, what did I do? the studio. Didn't you read the rules? There, right. There's a really funny picture going on online about that, and it shows somebody playing with the pen, and it's like, in your head, you think you're cool, but in the head of everybody else around the table, you're talking, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> you know what Having I, a race. You know what I enjoy? Serenity now! <laughs> is we've had Sanity the later. greatest well-written question in a long time. <laughs> and, and all you guys do is just... Can you just start just it again? <laughs> yeah. Let's pay attention. Let's get back on track. Let's do it again. It's all right. We'll start with the second paragraph. Oh, okay. The first paragraph is just, thank you. How are you? The second paragraph question. The question I want answered is, I am coming to Canada, Oshawa, and I would like to play while I'm there. Do you know any good places around where I'm staying that I could play? Also, I would like to play at a walk-on. Do you know of a site I can rent a decent marker at at a walk-on? Thanks for your time, Louis Tiny. Hmm. Very nice. Well well written, and thank you for the concern. Joe, I'm going to leave this one for you because this is if, if he's in Oshawa, he's... When is he coming to... When's he coming? The, wait, soon or does it say? It was not disclosed. Okay, well, if he's coming soon, I guess you could go probably to... Um, Next paintball would be the closest field in the Oshawa. Um, if you're coming in the summer, then you've got some options. You know, to you could come to Flaggers Outdoor Field. It depends whether you want to play indoor or outdoor. Maybe let us know when you're coming, and we can give you some more information. You know what? Send us an email to show at behindthebunker dot com. And to be honest with you, um, let us know when you're coming, and uh, I'll make sure that Flaggers takes. Uh, takes care of you give you some entry so you can at least come oh, down and that's so maybe nice. we'll set you up with some rental oh, rental equipment so nice. it also wow. depends on how versatile or how mobile he is if he's you know yeah if he's in oshawa and he's taking a train then very he's good not man come down here. very yeah. good man well, let's yeah, see yeah, yeah, let's get a train is. from oshawa to kitchen if he's within yeah. an hour of the best field in ontario you might as well come and check it out <laughs> if he can off the break says you could go to camp x in bowmanville yeah, yeah there's further true. yeah there's there's uh, that uh, that place PRZ or PRZ. Whatever. That's in well, that's far. It's a drive, yeah. I guess it's a drive. So let's in. let's Oshawa, let's try to find out Oshawa when you're. Is, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, no, Matt's right. Let's try to find yeah. out when you're coming, and we'll um, get you some more information. Who yeah. goes to Oshawa, anyways? Yeah, maybe he's going to GM. Maybe it's yeah. uh yeah. yeah going to the Schwa. Oh, maybe <laughs> should we get Schwa? A, now speaking of Schwa. Schwa. Let's all talk over each other, okay? <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> all right. So speaking of there. off the break, guys, off the break, Twitter's us in and asks, at big games or events, do you think that the majority of players are there actually playing the objectives or just going for kill counts? Well, at most mm-hmm. big games, I think everybody's there to eat. <laughs> if it's an airsoft big game, that they're there to photograph each other. Yes. And charge the batteries. <laughs> I brought Instagram. three guns and 57 cameras. <laughs> Instagram yeah. central. I, I think 40%, 20, 20 to 40% of the players are there to complete the mission. The other 20 to 40 are there just to go out and shoot people and other people to do a bit of both. Wouldn't you say, Josh? I would venture to say the ones that actually do the missions are a little bit less. Than 20%? Oh, yeah. I guess because you're a general, you'd sort of know... You'd have a better feeling of that. I would say, on average, if we get a, a, a like a really good like the Spring Phoenix, I would say if I had about four hundred, four hundred fifty people playing on my side, I might get twenty people interested in doing missions. Really? Yep. Hmm. That's about it. I you know you can uh, why uh, you can ask people as you walk by and go, hey, you want to do a mission? They go, yeah, okay. I go, well, okay, you know, head over here and look for this. Well, two hours later, you see them and they go. Uh, I think I'm ready to go look for that crate again. What was it called? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the missions are se- are time sensitive as well. They're not just do them when you feel like doing them during the day. Yeah, yeah. you know what I will say though. It's not the do what you feel festival. <laughs> Because if it was, nobody would be wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt a lot. Just saying. Yeah. I, I have to say though that at at, at Flaggers when we have big games, <laughs> uh, we have a large speedball contingent that's out there still playing, and and they see these big games and all these guys having fun, and you'll see that eventually some of the speedballers make it make their way over to the big game and they go out and play. And I mean, you they know, find their soul. They, they want to go out and they want to 
you know, shoot people and that's great. And they, and they find that they have fun that way. But when they start actually running a mission or, or, or being sent on a task, um, they instantly fall, fall in love with big games. And that's all they want to do is, is play big games. Now they don't quit speedball. Don't get me wrong. But or they, they, or they, they can't understand how to hang a flag at a hospital. Eh, Don? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. How do I do this? I mean, we put the fl- uh, flag on, on the post. Hey, huh? <laughs> Why don't you make it like a tree and beat it? <laughs> oh. All right, let's you keep moving. Leave the speedballers speed alone. S- s- sink ships. <laughs> All right, Tim Hauser writes in: When a pro player sponsor dumps half of his plot on the ground while reloading every recreational gun, when a pro player sponsor dumps half of his plot on the ground while reloading every recreational player cringes because we buy our paint. What does a paint sponsor do when pros are wasting good paint? Do they care? I imagine that if that move makes the player stay on target and deny an enemy player from crossing his lane, then it's okay. But to us rec players, it's a cardinal sin. Well, anybody dumping paint, even if they are a pro, I mean, a pro should know better. I mean, the last thing they want to do is waste their paint when they're on the field because if they're the last guy standing, how many times do they run out of paint, right? Um, I, I, Too bad mustard in the I, chat. <laughs> yeah, I <Why>? think <laughs> I, I didn't know it was mustard. <laughs> I think what people I think people exaggerate with that because they see you know every once in a while, and typically it's not a pro player that misses or hopper like that. Yeah. But they see somebody every once in a while that does that, and then they're like, "Oh my god, all those speedball players always miss their hoppers." Yeah, but you know what? Yes, they do pay for their paint too, and a lot of those guys play more frequent than the average rental player or, or rec ball player. Um, and in turn, actually end up spending more money over the course of the year on paint. I, I, I would say, um, but they, you know, with with the quantities that they go through, sometimes it becomes not as much of a value as as, as the rental guys who are paying proper price for paint. Hmm. So we're a little distracted because uh, one of our regulars got kicked out of the chat form for some reason. And that's Ooh. his own fault. That's his own <laughs> fault. Seb, I've asked him four bastard. times with a countdown to explain his name, and he would not do it. So let that be a lesson to you, sir. <laughs> Answer when the mods are asking. Very nice. All right, let's keep going with these questions, guys. You're cold as ice. And we're watching your, we're watching the live chat, so if you have questions, <laughs> get into the live chat. And if you uh, want to send an email, send or not an email, rather, send a Twitter, because we're not checking your email at this point. Email. Joe, Please as a do. field owner, C4 Explosives, you'd have a really good handle on this one. Uh, wh- kind of a broad one, but as a field owner, what are your requirements or what do you find your requirements are for a field sponsored team? Well, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. Um, it's nice to have some help with the field and um, promote, oh. help promote your events um, and so on and so forth. But often everyone starts off very gung ho at the beginning of the season, partway through the season, people drop off. And by the end of the season, there's not much involvement at all. So as a te- team, as a field owner, it's at times rather frustrating. Yep. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, I, <laughs> no, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just grinding my teeth over a comment that was made in the chat form. MagFed is the scenario version of pump. No. No prefers DXS paint. Pump is the version of pump. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's on a speedball field, a hyperball field, a scenario field, or a woods ball field, don't you ever <laughs> have the gall to say that MagFed is anywhere remotely close to that of pump play. Eric Angler says he got distracted by a college twerking competition. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> oh, Eric. Focus. If you, if you are Focus. a team and you want to be sponsored by a field, you you, you got to make sure that you are putting the field before you. No one's going to give you money to do anything, especially pay paintball, unless you've given them something in return, albeit volunteer days, promotion, um, bringing other or inviting other teams to the field to, to give the field revenue. Um, unless you're giving the field some sort of opportunity to save money or create revenue, you're not getting anything out of them. So if you want to be sponsored, um, find ways to be useful. But uh, yeah, and not only that, but if you are going to be sponsored by a team, you have to keep in mind I- image. Image is everything. If you go anywhere, you're a representation of that field. So if you associate yourself with, you know, field A and you get to a game and you act like a total nard, guess what? Everyone thinks that same field's going to be there. So even as a field owner, you have to take quite the leap of faith to be able to sponsor somebody so you have to prove that you're capable yep. enough to walk out there and represent yep. somebody and you know what go to that go to the field that you want to be sponsored by 
and just go do something for them. Go go help them out. Go go pick up some garbage. Help them park cars. Um, help them at the counter. Do whatever you can to show that you are a willing participant in this agreement and put you know put something forth. Um, and that just doesn't end when you get your sponsor. You don't end at that. You continue to tow the company line because at some, any point in time they can pull that sponsorship. So if you want to be a happy, you don't want to have a happy relationship. You have to. You know, it's got to go both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a question here, and I do not Bazinga. fully understand it. Uh, sent in on Facebook by Colin Donaldson. He writes, what paintball has the most kinetic energy at 7,500 to 150 feet? We know autocockers can leave a nasty well, but what speedball gun can deliver <clears throat> downrange? Myself, I think it's die DMs. I had two Bob Long V2s and G6Rs. I would like to get, or I would get a lot of bounces, with, and with the DMs, not so much. Now I have a Lux 2.0 and waiting for the weather to get better to try it. I do not understand this question at yeah, all. No, the, I don't your get marker it. won't make any changes on bounce. Yeah, I can no. say that the shot coming out of most paintball guns have slight variations. Uh, the, the, the DM guns has a certain type of a shot versus, well, I will say, um, a Geo. Um, if you put them, you know, if you shoot one after another, you can see that the trajectory of the ball seems to me be a little bit different. But both are shooting and doing the exact same thing. I don't really know if you're going to notice a big difference. The one thing I would say is the autococker. If you take an autococker on the field and shoot it after you've shot anything, I swear that thing is the only gun I ever shoot that shoots straight and long. And then when it just finally gives up, um, it just drops out of the sky. Um, (laughs) But if you ever get an opportunity to try a brand new Resurrection or an old autococker, Take one out for a spin. I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But that's the only gun that I feel has the best trajectory if you're going to... Nothing argue. feels better than that clunk, 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 clunk. Are you gagging? <laughs> All right. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ding my own. Um, <laughs> I've got to let Dustin do it for me. All right, Dusty, let's move on. All right, I have a question here. It is from Todd. At flagraders.com. It's from me. Yeah. From him it, it or, says, or emailed it says to you from, from Todd. It, no, it no, says no, it's from, from Todd to show up behind the bucket. You probably emailed it to yourself. Oh, or yes, something. I emailed it to myself. <laughs> All right. If Dun. you could combine paintball with any other sport, what would it be? This Nerf. Is g- <laughs> oh, wait. That's not a sport. <laughs> <laughs> Rollerblading? Rollerblading? I've, Skateboarding? I've, I've seen uh, hockey. We've seen snowboarding. We've I seen paintball guns attached to snowboarding. We've seen an auto. What's auto. the frost? Frost bee? What's what's the sport? frisbee golf? The Ultimate f- frisbee. frisbee. Frolf. <laughs> frolf. You and George. <laughs> the summer. The summer of Todd. Yeah. <laughs> Playing frolf. I did take up. I did take up frolf on the summer of Todd, didn't I? <laughs> what? Uh, I'd like to see paintball <laughs> mixed in with skydiving. <laughs> <three people in laughs> paintball skydiving. That's awesome. <laughs> Unless you drop it. <laughs> Yeah, that would be well, only it should disastrous. have a little parachute on its own. Well, if if paintball is an op- ultimate sport, the extreme would be uh, monster trucks, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't you want to combine paintball with monster trucks? Yeah, let's invite more rednecks. To play <laughs> yes, what Sunday, could possibly Sunday, go Sunday, wrong? In Saturday too. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'd like to kids. try paintball with a little bit of skiing. <laughs> I, I think that would that be sure. fun. Not a little bit of almost yeah. like a James Bond. You're going down the hill shooting at each other. Obviously, if, you would have to do it on a, in a closed environment where it's safe, where you didn't have other people out Sunday what afternoon. What is the skiing. most worthless sport called? Where guys baseball? Go, no, well, yes, but when they <laughs> when in an oh. urban setting, they're running upstairs. And, parkour. That's parkour. 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 Could you parkour. Con- convince or can? There's a dynasty parkour. 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 That'd be fit to do that. You've never seen the dynasty parkour video? No. Because uh, I have cable, and more <laughs> interesting. It's channels. actually pretty good. It's I think it's with Dynasty. It. You're such an anti dentite. <laughs> Martello, Martello thirty one in the buddy. chat. Martello thirty one in the chat wrote dressage paintball on horses. I'm assuming that's what dressage know. is. I would like to see if, if you can call it a sport like uh, mud runs, like tough mudder. It's Spartan Race. I think that would be really that would fun be cool. Inside. Actually, yeah, I was just thinking that. I'd like to see Todd knit, <laughs> <laughs> not crocheting. Knit. At the end of at the end of sport. dressage paintball, like, though, would it be happy? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of like weird because you know it's all dressy and prissy walking, and then all of a sudden it's well, airsofting. But if you look at the Olympics, didn't they combine running, 
um, and uh, uh, what is it? No, oh, and, oh, cross, cross country. country skiing, shooting, and something else. That's isn't that's it? Swimming? Yeah, yeah, you can't use, you can no longer use the Olympics as the staple for sporting events because they kept softball in, but yet somehow decided they're going to try and take wrestling out. Yeah. But they did a few ones like that, didn't they? They pulled out a few, uh, few different ones. Stupidest thing ever. Or didn't they try and instigate thing. ballroom dancing? Yes. Come on, really? Um, okay, it's we need to terrible. stop the show for a second and address something very important here. Prefers, prefers DXS paint. This is your final warning. He, in the chat, he wrote, I love baseball. Any more comments like that yeah, will cause been, you to be uh, turfed from He's the... been trolling for a while. <laughs> I'm itching to kick more people out tonight. Just try me. Baseball's not a real sport. Don't, don't give me that. It's America's pastime, and they didn't even invent the sport for Pete's sakes. What about hurdles? Some guy starts Hurtling? getting ahead of you. Yeah. All right. Well, let's Curling. move on. I don't know. I, fa- I, I found that parkour video. Good thing you found it during the podcast. Good. Nice. <laughs> Close it well, so there's we people, continue doing our there's baseball people watching. podcast. Okay. Well, email it to me, and I will we'll put it on next week. All right. Yeah. I will pause this video, and yeah. All right. Next question. Jim Sheets writes, what do you think the best aftermarket item of all times is? Of strike times loader. Is? <laughs> By far, the strike loader. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I actually trolled the strike loader to see if it existed this week. After I watch the show and rewind every week just to make sure everything is on the up and up. And uh, it, uh, it, it still doesn't have a release date. And it's still the funniest thing I've ever seen as far as a paintball Troll. product. Troll. I, I believe it is. Mr. Trollolo. I believe <laughs> it is. I think it's cool. So what was the question? What's the best <laughs> aftermarket product? What is wrong with us? <laughs> A lot. You know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, someone came <laughs> up. On the hey, Dustin, website. I know one. What yeah. about the guy that came up with this a few years ago? He took heat shrink. And he printed his logo the on rain it. rain sleeve. He called it the rain sleeve. So what you do is you take it to your field and you put it over the porting in your barrel. And you take a cigarette lighter and you, uh, you heat it so it basically seals all the ports on your, um, on your barrel. Not that you could use electrical tape for that or anything like that. But. <laughs> and then you had to, like, cut it off. <laughs> yeah, it was on there pretty good. Um, best, best aftermarket product. Tall tees. You got to have that swag coming out the bottom of your jersey. Jeez, oh, I liked it when people started baking their, uh, you know, guns and barrels. <laughs> and <laughs> hey, look at I baked my gun. Yeah, it's brown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I break mine too. It yeah, smells it's like banana brown bread. Too. <laughs> it smells mm. like burnt pizza. There's an extreme amount of Tastes brown like guns burning. out there. <laughs> uh, I only baked the parts, so the body's still good. The, the best thing that's ever been brought <laughs> into paintball is two though. things. One is the barrel squeegee. Girls. Um, that was uh, Joe and I talked Girls. about that a couple weeks Girls. ago. And uh, microfiber cloths. Girls. Girls. I think one of the <laughs> coolest uh, Girls. Mo- like barrel squeegees is the exalt Girls. one Just with the retractable end. You know what I mean? No. No. Nope. The one where that would fold in, in half. Where you push it into the barrel and it pulls away from the barrel wall. And then as you pull it out, it expands again. Oh, a straight wall. shot. Yeah. No. The, the new one, they, yeah. They oh, knew it's a one. new one. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, Dustin's unaware that they used to have straight shots. And yeah, yeah. I know what the straight shot one is, yeah. but you had to manually do that. Oh, heaven forbid you do something manually. <laughs> There's an automated barrel cleaning device. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let me find out what it's called. It's made right, by well. Strickland Propane and <laughs> Propane Accessories, <laughs> a division of Exalt Paintball. Yeah. It's called the Barrel Made. One the could Exalt oh. Barrel Made. One could argue that now the best aftermarket it. product for paintball was the uh, electric loader, the view loader. If you think about the it, the really oscillated loader. It was it it, it was it was guys ma- putting motors and stuff into their into their old VLs that that started the whole revolution, wasn't it? That's aftermarket. Well, that's sort of yeah. like uh, not a cottage market. industry, and then it formed into an yeah. actual proper business for creating them. How did an agitated hopper be part of the cottage industry? Well, why don't you just tell me your idea? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't have no idea. Well, as Todd was trying to explain, <laughs> Sorry, you know, random that. people, you know, creating, you know, hobo ways of doing it, you know, putting I, little oscillating things on a flimsy motor inside their hopper. Yeah, I. 
And, yeah, and the Halo, so. remember when the Halo first came out? Force that was like fed. the be all end all. Yeah. And they had all those screws that were all a different length. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that? I still love Hello B. I cleaned up my office this like weekend in mm-hmm. a little corner and I came across a brand new Halo shell. Um, and I got all excited. I thought, that's great. I could sell that. And the <laughs> gentleman that was with me said, who's going to want that? I, I got all depressed. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy it. Do you? Yeah. All Into right. the I vault have new, it goes. I have new shells. I, I bought say, some I, online for like 30 bucks. I find it really hard to believe, Todd, that you found something and actually wanted to sell it. <laughs> Martello <laughs> has... a spree right now. Martello says his he loves cyborg. his aftermarket <laughs> gun-mounted <laughs> ashtray. Oh, jeez. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a bottle opener from the beer stores, my beaver tail and my autocock. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. Let's move on. Okay. We have other questions. Sure. I'm getting tired. <laughs> It's, it's getting hot in to here. To be honest with you, it's cold and the wolves are it's, after it's me. It's hot in her. All right. Line. Todd needs to be <laughs> home before midnight or it turns into a pumpkin. That's why I five out tonight. <laughs> He's oh, not. Okay. If he doesn't kiss the prince by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, wow. prince. Ask, ask wow. the question. <laughs> All right. Dusty's girlfriend shaking her head right now. Tammy? <laughs> Tammy Works is her name. That folks. was a slow Tammy clap works. right there. And Matt's too busy texting to... <laughs> no, well, it's it's the... It's a podcast. Yeah. The slow clap doesn't work in the I, podcast. You need the visual to really grasp I its suspect, full potential. I suspect Tammy and uh, Matt texting each other because I, I keep seeing <laughs> both of them on their phone, so I'm suspicious. All right, Dusty. Ooh. One more question. Let's make it a good one here. How do we make our paintball events a more family-friendly event? Less knuckle breathers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Keep your, keep your shirts on at the field. Um. I think it's very important to post up and make it very, very clear that your mm. field is a dry field as it should be. Yeah. I'd like to see more paintball fields with proper, clean, accessible, uh, flat staging areas where families can come and watch um, paintball through the mesh and, and, and hang out and, and have picnic area where, where families can have tailgate parties during the course of the day. Um, lot, when Joe and I were down in the south, that was a lot of things... We saw that a lot on a lot of the bigger paintball fields. People would go make a day of it, and you'd have you know um, all the all the kids out there playing paintball, and some of the parents would be back at the picnic tables organizing things and keeping everything in check and having picnic lunches and stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I think you know we we've seen a, a realist in I guess resurgence or you know couples doing things together. A lot of more guys and girls are actually playing paintball together. A lot of moms are organizing birthday parties and they're coming out to the field with lunches and stuff for the kids and, and having cakes and and things like that and you're seeing it, you know, you try to make it as fra- family friendly. We don't when when someone phones in and makes a booking, we don't say we have, you know, an award-winning staging area. We say our staging area is rustic, you know, and there's picnic tables and, you know, tarped in staging area. It's not it's rustic. It's not there's not a party room cuz we're at an outdoor paintball field as most paintball fields are. So I, I think, you know, and most, most people come come prepared for for that. They'll bring a book. They'll bring their iPad. They'll sit, you know, they'll take some pictures of the kids. I think it's a it's a great opportunity. As a, as a field owner, you have to encourage them to be involved and come out and take some pictures and hang around. I'm so. sorry, but that would be the worst award ceremony ever. Whoever <laughs> hands out the best <laughs> staging area in the industry. Yes. <laughs> It'd be very dry. Yeah. Um, I will say that uh, one of the uh, w- one of the things that we've done at our indoor, which kind of goes against w- everything, is we offered free Wi-Fi, and the parents do stick around and, and tend to be there. But the only problem is then they're on their phones and they're not really there. They're they're sort of there in person, but yeah. yeah but you go to anywhere where they're <laughs> well done. <laughs> there you Turn go. your mic back. He on. muted you because you're good. knuckle breathing. <laughs> You, you go, go anywhere <laughs> where there's parents waiting for their kids and they're not socializing. If you go to a ski chalet and the parents are waiting for their kids to have a lesson point. There, or a hockey arena, if you if you just stop when you walk in and look at the parents, how many of the parents are actually engaging whoever they're with or who they're near? They're not talking to each other. They're they're texting or they're on their iPad or on their phone it's just on, walk on, into on. a room where there's a bunch of parents waiting for the kids and see who's actually talking to one another or communicating yeah. um i wouldn't go as Unless far to hockey, say that happens at hockey you just, can't get reception in 99 percent of the arenas in ontario you that's why they just fight instead people <laughs> yeah the outdoor field needs a parent's island 
<laughs> at Parents <laughs> Island, like in the middle of the field, you just like corral them all together. These Simpson quotes are going over a lot of people's heads. They are. <laughs> we may have to. But it's with it, but it really it's not such a bad idea to have some you know no, maybe I adult agree. sized picnic tables, a nice sheltered area where they can throw out a blanket, have some lunch, and yeah. You know, you make sure you have cold beverages for sale and mm-hmm. for non-players. And met water. Swinger party. And Gatorade. <laughs> C4 Explosive said, have a bar at the field? Question mark. You know what? You can't necessarily no, have a bar at the field. that's not a family-friendly area. But the other thing you can do is, uh, at, at an indoor you can do this. I'm not sure if, how viable it is an outdoor. But you can also have a family area where you have, much like when you go to your, your dealership and you go to get your car serviced, you're, you can sit in a, a, a warm room with comfortable chairs. You can watch a television. There's coffee being made. At least you can keep keep people somewhat comfortable. Kind of like the behind the bunker tent we have set up. Yeah. That's right. It'd be a great tent. idea. Air ups couch, but at an indoor field, I don't think it's very plausible <laughs> with air ups. All couch. the we grimy have good naps. players coming in and sitting in said couches Fantastic and naps. Yeah. grimifying everything. And yeah, <laughs> grimifying it. <laughs> Best <laughs> word ever. It. Yeah. Tonight's brought to you by Grimified. <laughs> All right. Do we have any more questions, Dusty, or should we end it and here? Boss We're go. I don't I know. Go. We could go on forever. I still have a ton of questions. Okay, let's do one more. Well, don't hurt your back. Lift Ooh. your knees. Ooh. All right. Uh, do you think politics plays a part in paintball? If so, why and how? How does how, how, does? how doors does this make you as a player? I don't know what that last part's supposed to say. Unfortunately, how? politics is everywhere, including in paintball. Always. Best thing to do is ignore it. Go out there and play with fun. Stay off a team. Don't join a yes. team if you don't want politics, um, even in circles with your friends. Very true. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. That rant almost would have been a good spot to turn the bed up. Do, do, let's, do. let's try that again. In three, <laughs> two, one. Yeah, so don't join a team, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all honesty, I mean, politics and paintball is definitely where it's, you know, you know, it's with any sport. I mean, you look at hockey, hockey moms, soccer moms. I mean, it, it's out there. If you, you know, if you don't like it, be the lone soldier that goes out to your local paintball field by yourself. Join and play with guys that you enjoy playing with. And if uh, it becomes political, stop. Go go play with other people. Um, and I think with that, since the music is playing, we'll end it here, right? All right. Thank you, Dustin, for answering all those questions. Why don't you put yeah. the ones that you didn't use on the back burner? Maybe we'll get to them next week. Thank you guys for submitting them. Uh, Seb, thank you for joining us tonight. You're welcome. And Matt the Crypt for pushing all the buttons. Yes, I am here. <laughs> very nice. We're doing this in reverse order. Joe Kimson. Yes, thank you hey, very much for joining there. us. Thank you for Dustin being... Dustin was discluded. Was I discluded, <laughs> yeah, Dustin? Yeah, clearly. I got skipped no, over the, that. No, he was the first one. I was asking... I said thank you for answering the questions. You'll I was at backwards. Because I'm in the middle. the last one. Well, it's backwards <laughs> because you were the one answering the questions. All right, we've given too much mic time to Dustin tonight. <laughs> Joe Kimson from Flag Artist Paintball, thank you for being in the show tonight. Thank you. And Zuby, Josh Zuby Zavirkis, are you looking forward to Extravaganza? Have you done any research on what we're going to eat at Extravaganza? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with food. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of it? Pickle and Barrel! many, many, many large quantities of it. Very nice. Very nice. All right, guys, my name is Todd Ensich. I've been your host for this podcast. This is podcast number nine. Thank you for very much for subscribing to iTunes um, or checking us out on podcast. Automatic. If you're watching us live, thank you guys. We'll see you guys all back here next week for another edition of Behind the Bunker. Peace out, Holmes. <laughs>